After 10 strong, arguably perfect years, the DCEU has come to an end. I'm being sarcastic. There were some decent films in the bunch, though. I think a lot of people jumped off the train when it was announced DCU was going to step in with James Gunn and we were going to reboot everything. But there are some hangers on. There are some people that just love Aquaman so much. They have to be there day one for the movie. Well, I was there and I'm going to give you my thoughts right now. Let's dive in because <laughs> of the water. We're going to be doing a spoiler free review today, but before I get into it, why don't you do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. O only if you like movie conversation, you like honest opinions, you like a little lighthearted humor thrown in the mix. I'd appreciate the subscription and a like and a notification on the bell. Okay, let's get into it. Aquaman 2. It's a James Wan joint, just like the last one. Here's the deal. I'm not a big fan of the Aquaman 1. The character's fine. I like Jason Momoa as Aquaman. I think he brought a little edge to the table. He brought his uh, strongness, his coolness. Uh, apparently they have a deal with Guinness in this film because he's crushing Guinness beer cans like it's his job outside of being the king of Atlantis. It's a little obnoxious early on in the first 10 minutes. I'm just thinking, brought to you by Guinness. Okay, fine. Can we get past it now? Can we get that paycheck and move on? This movie, I enjoyed more than the first one. Keep in mind, I didn't enjoy the first one very much. That movie's two hours and 20 some minutes long. It feels like 15 different movies because James Wan didn't think he was going to be back for another one. So he thought... Let me do a horror film. Let me do a rom-com. Let me do a buddy road trip adventure. Let me do an epic big battle at the end. He did everything. And some of it worked really well. And this time he does a bunch of stuff again. But it does feel more consistent. It does have a tone that overall fits. There's no pit bulls Africa busting out during a desert scene. This one's a lot more consistent. What's inconsistent are, again, the effects. Sometimes the thing looks beautiful. Some of the shots are, are stripped, you know, ripped right out of a comic book, ripped right out of a larger than life movie. And other times it looks like unrendered PS2 footage. I shit you not. There was a moment where he and his brother are walking through some sort of a water portal and the guards and everything around them looked unrendered. It looked unfinished. And I know Warner Brothers not doing great for cash right now. And I know they're trying to move past the DCEU. So it wouldn't even surprise me if this movie was unfinished when they released it. They thought, ah, we got to hit the deadline. We got to hit it out Christmas time. Just push it out. Who cares? Story-wise, it's dumb. Aquaman's taking on climate change. That's fine. It, it makes sense. It's kind of topical. It's uh, It works well with the underwater adventure because... Things are heating up, so it's affecting the algae, it's affecting the ice caps, and, and what comes with it is, is bad stuff. There's some bad stuff at play. Who else is back from the first one besides Momoa? Well, we have his brother. This is going to be a road trip adventure of sorts. He's going to be spending a lot of time with the guy. I don't know his name. Orin? Tom? Garrett? I can't remember. I can't be bothered to remember. He was the bad guy in the first, one of a couple. The other bad guy's back as well. Manta. He, he, Black Manta's back, and uh, he's less ridiculous this time, I guess. I still find the costume to com uh, be completely ridiculous. It looks dumb as crap. This time around, it's used a little better. The, the whole concept of a regular guy shooting a giant laser beam out of his dumb head is, is pretty dumb on paper because there's just so many things that could go wrong from a pra practicality standpoint. He's not Cyclops. He wasn't born this way. He is going to get some more powers, though, that's going to make him an actual threat this time and less of a joke. And I do like the idea of him being this regular guy who's so obsessed about revenge that he's going to go to the ends of the earth. He's going to hire a crew. He's going to put all this money that he somehow has into all this stuff. I'm not sure how he's affording any of this expedition, but who cares, really? At the end of the day, no nothing really adds up in this film. Aquaman's also a father. Early on, we find out he has a baby, kind of make him a little bit more humanized, I suppose, with Mara. She is back. I know Amber Heard is a touchy subject for some. People are boycotting the, the film because of 
the Johnny Depp fiasco with her and the court stuff. And I don't care about any of that. People have their personal lives. People have a lot of problems in their lives. Okay. Um, I, I, I mean, like if, if we're going to boycott things based on actors being garbage people, there's not going to be a lot of movies left to watch. <laughs> and imagine that, like every movie that comes out, there are hundreds of people that touch the film from the editors to the grips, to the camera people, to the, the screenwriters, to the producers in that pool of people. There's probably a dozen just awful trash individuals that have some really bad skeletons in their closet. Uh, we, we can't, we have to separate folks. We have to separate. I beg you. I, 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 I plead with you to just move past it. Anyway, she sucks in this anyways. Amber Heard's never been an actress where I'm like, oh man, what a, what a great performance here. And this time is, she just feels out of place. I will say impressive cleavage. That's pretty much all I'm taking away from the character is very nice cleavage on display whenever she's there. Uh, as for Momoa, he seems less, I don't know, something's wrong with him in this one. I don't know if it's the look because he seems a bit heavier this time around, probably from all the Guinness that he's drinking. Maybe his heart's not in it anymore because in the back of his mind, he's like, this is probably my last ride. The ride's over. I don't know. And I, and I have to believe that they recycled that stupid, yeah! About 15 times. He sounds like Goofy. <laughs> Every time he jumps off a cliff, he hits a statue, he beats up some dudes. There's that, that sound effect. <laughs> Wipe out. It's awful. They need to stop using it. That said, the movie wasn't awful. Two hours is still too long for a movie like this. I, I want it shorter. If you give me a 90 minute, even a 110 minute film, I can feel complete. There is still downtime in this that has no real purpose. We could have cut an action scene or two and not missed a step. There are a lot of explosions. Like, shit is blowing up 24-7. If you're going to this for an action movie, you'll be pretty happy, I think. There is some really great action. There's some fantastic spectacle. I said it in my out-of-theater reaction, but this really does feel like Lord of the Rings for kids. It feels like children's Lord of the Rings. It's It's... It's light, it's pumpy, pumpy, that's not, it, it's light, it's poppy, it's pulpy is the word I was looking for. I combined poppy and pulpy into, into pompy. It's pompy. We'll say that as well. It's pompy. And overall, it's just kind of a, it's a shit show. <laughs> some stuff looks great. Some stuff looks terrible. Some of the dialogue is just really bad. Like at one point, Arthur Curry goes, yeah, he's back again. Manta's back. But he's stronger now. And he has more powers. He's going to be tougher to defeat. It's just so dumb. It's the most stock dialogue you could possibly get. Nothing inspiring here. So keep it short. Keep it tight. Keep it sweet. We can move on. My son, who's 11, did not see this. And I regret not taking him, to be honest with you. Movies cost a lot of money now. And I'm, I'm really getting sick of taking my kids to movies that suck. I think he would have had a great time. And I really do think Aquaman 2, the sweet spot as far as age goes, is probably 8 to 15 year old boys. That, that's really the target audience for this one. This feels like a, a movie catered to younger kids. And that's fine. I mean, the Marvels came out by the uh, MCU side of things. I had a good time with that. It was an hour and 45. It's a fast food meal. You get in, you get out. You didn't feel like you wasted your whole day away with it. If you're going to make dumb crap with a lot of explosions and one-liners and it's colorful and fun and, and just silly, keep it short, keep it simple. The Marvels did that. Aquaman 2 almost does that as well. It's a little longer than it needs to be. But otherwise, I don't have any like major gripes with it. I didn't go into this expecting some really profound, great film. Because I saw the first one and it wasn't that at all. So this, I think, does a better job of uh, at least going in one direction. Now, the direction might not be what some people wanted. Uh, for instance, me, when I saw the first movie, James Wan obviously has a lot of horror movies under his belt. He's really good at that. The scene in the trench where Curry and Mara dive over the boat and we get that wide angle shot of all those creatures swimming after them into the deep, dark, black sea. 
he looks so good. And that flare is lighting him up. That's fantastic. I would have loved to see a James Wan horror style Aquaman movie, but he put it in the first one in that little section. Here he has not given us that. There is a kind of slow build first act with a couple of intriguing things that end up going to just dumb bill. You know, it always starts out with a mystery that's like, ooh, what's in here? And how do we unlock this? And what's this going to lead to? Well, it ultimately always leads to the same thing. A guy getting superpowers and then he's tougher to beat. That's really what it comes down to. He attempts to do some stuff with the story. Or I guess not him. Oh, he did. He did co-write it. I'm looking at. Oh, uh, interesting. Jason Momoa has a writing credit on this as well, along with David Leslie Johnson McGoldrick. That's one person. That's a long name. A lot of writers on this apparently, and you can kind of tell because there's a bunch of ideas at play. Some of them seem pretty uh, one-dimensional. Some are definitely not fleshed out enough. And at the end of the day, you have a pretty okay to to kind of stupid movie that you'll forget about probably in a week and whatever. It was entertaining enough for me. I do not recommend you rush out and see this or even see it in theaters if you did not like the first movie at all. If you were like half on board and you want something a little faster, Aquaman 2 delivers that. It is quicker. I do like the chemistry with the brothers enough. That worked well. A lot of good spectacle. Some really great action in the second, uh, the third act, I should say. The third act, there's some freaking sweet one-on-one -on -one fights, uh, especially at the weigh-in. I was like, okay, this is cool. This is visceral. This is great. And uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. I think I talked enough. Aquaman 2, fine. <laughs> you could have ended worse on the DCEU. You could have ended worse. This is just a fizzle out. And that, that's good enough. All right, let me know your thoughts on this movie. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did it just disappoint you all around? Or are you like me and you thought, yeah, okay, fine. Villain was whatever. Okay, yeah. Kind of, I didn't like the setup for Black Manta to begin with, so it's not like I had any high expectations from that character. But overall, not terrible. Just, just a watchable, disposable thing. Let me know. Put it in the comments. Please like the video if you, in fact, like the video and the ramblings and the, the rants and the whatever I'm doing here. Subscribe again. I, I beg you. I implore you to subscribe to the channel because I post tons of movie reviews, roasts, live streams twice a week, having a good time talking films. Would love to have you join the conversation. If you really like what I'm doing and you want to give a gift for the holidays, since I've given so many gifts on my channel, maybe think, hey, Adam, here's a Patreon membership. I'm going to become a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies where there's a $1 tier, a $5, $30. It goes up. Or I'll become a member right here on YouTube via the join button. Or I will just do a one-time super thanks under this video, which you can do. All right, that's all I know. Stay dry and happy holidays. Take care.